Greetings everyone! Uh, happy October! We're into October. It's officially fall, I think. Well, maybe not officially, but it sure is getting that way, although it doesn't feel like it with the weather. Uh, we live in Southern California, so we just get warm all the time. <clears throat> but we are not talking about weather today. Nope, we're talking about composition. So we've started with line and we've progressed through that quite nicely. We're going to move into another one of our elements of art, which is space. So as we talk about space, we want to talk about our pictorial space. So all that's happening in here uh, within the edges of our format. And when we talk about that, we're talking about composition. So how we arrange those elements of art within the edges of that format, um, that's how we're going to create those principles of de design. And those principles are what give um, an intentional feeling or direction to your observer. So um, hopefully you read through uh, and viewed the PowerPoint presentation, has all of the information that we're going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as um, visual examples for you. And if you go to the alternate text that's included with the photos, it'll give you the artist's name and title of the work if you're interested. Um, so when we're talking about composition, we're talking about design. And the way that you arrange the elements of art um, is exactly what design is. Um, so we're talking about line, shape, color, value, texture, form and space. Those are our elements. And in the PowerPoint presentation, I gave the analogy of cooking and the elements of art are our ingredients. That's what we use. Um, then the organization of those ingredients, um, that those are our principles of design. So the principles of design being balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and unity. We have seven of those. And those are our recipes. So when we think about intentionally arranging something, right, we do that in the kitchen with ingredients. Um, with balance, we want to be thinking about equal visual weight on both sides of your drawing. Painting, photograph, sculpture, you can apply it in all of the disciplines. With contrast, we're thinking about ways to show a difference. A lot of times we see that in terms of value, stark black and white is a huge contrast. Um, we can also see a contrast in terms of color. We can see it in style um, and we can see it even in shape or form. Um, we move on to emphasis. When I think of emphasis, I would think of a focal point. So one area or specific place within your drawing that you want the observer's eye to be drawn to, to go to. So you direct them to that area. And you can do that in a number of ways. Um, what you'll find is that our principles of design overlap on one another. So as I'm looking to create a focal point, what I may do is impl employ contrast. So I can have this really um, gray area and then have this pop of just stark black and white and that's going to be the thing that my eye goes to. If I'm painting a uh, change in color, that will do it. Uh, stylistically, if I have an interruption in the drawing that changes dramatically, um, that's going to give me a place for my eye to zero in on and go to. So we also have movement as one of our principles of design. And movement can be in two-dimensional art. Um, it's implied movement, right? Nothing is actually moving on the paper. As far as we're concerned, that would be really cool. Uh, I could see an instance of like paper mobiles or something, but even that would have a dimensional aspect. So I digress. With movement, it's an implied movement. And we give the idea of that movement um, through direction and shape, um, the type of line that we're using, the frequency of it, um, how a figure is positioned within that format, um, if they're pointing, uh, if they're exclaiming, right? We have that ability to 
um, imply movement and give the piece um, that sense of it happening. Pattern is uh, a repetition um, and that can be of a shape, a color, um, and it happens with regularity. So uh, you're able to choose that uh, if you would like to for your compositions. Another principle is rhythm. So rhythm is the pacing that happens throughout the drawing. And that, um, these last three, pattern, rhythm, and unity, seem to be really tied together um, tightly. Um, because when I think about rhythm, I think about um, sort of a repetition, right? Um, and when I think about repetition, I think about pattern. But the rhythm has to do more with um, how those pieces, so in pattern, we have the repetition of something, right? We're creating a pattern um, in like wallpaper or fabric would be good things to think about, like key into when you're trying to, oh, what does that mean? The example of Takashi Murakami's piece, a lot of his work um, is very much pattern. Uh, rhythm, when you think about music, think about the cadence of something. Sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it goes slow. So in your drawing, you have the opportunity to create a rhythm in the piece. So you may have, one of our examples was a Matisse work of the dance, and you could see these figures, um, they're holding hands, there's movement in that piece, um, there's unity, which is our last principle that we'll get to, um, through color as well as um, pattern set up with the repetition of the figure. Um, but the pacing is this sweeping movement, and it has a really smooth, um, progression from one figure to the next all the way around and on that same slide we have a Mondrian piece um, that looks at um, that quick pace right um, that Broadway piece and it's got all those little chunks right and it feels a lot more energetic and frenetic in the way that we move through that grid um, so that's another way of looking at um, those differences that can be created. And it doesn't have to be all one or all the other. You can have a change in rhythm throughout the drawing, throughout one drawing. Um, you can also have it be one pace. Um, and the last principle is unity, um, which is like a really big concept right now in life in general. Um, in art, we're talking about uh, unification throughout the drawing, so not really having, um, well, it's okay to have an outlier in the piece, uh, but you do want, uh, you could strive for unity in the work, and what that means is that we're able to connect um, throughout the format. Um, it's not uh, one thing here, one thing there, all very disparate. Um, we have maybe the same color palette throughout, so we might be dealing with um, a grasshopper and a can of soup and a, a block of sandpaper, right? Trying to think of really different things. And a unification for those, while they're very different in terms of subject matter, um, the palette or the color palette that an artist chooses could unify those, right? They exist within the same format, so they are together. Another way of unifying a piece or creating that sense of harmony, that's a great thing to think of as harmony, um, would be the style. So using the same style throughout the entire work. Um, what else could we use for unity? Um, shape, line, um, pretty much all a lot, a texture, right? Having that consistency um, creates harmony in the work. So like I mentioned before, our principles of design, they um, stack on top of one another, merge into one another. You find one, you often find another. And I would encourage you that as you look um, online, because I'm sure that's where most people look at um, magazines or uh, publications these days, I think they're mostly online. Uh, especially during um, uh, pandemic times, I think we're a lot online. Uh, but I was going to say magazines, just to look through. And as you go through and look at advertisements, photographs, art, then and going and looking at other artists' work, then you'll start to observe these principles in action. 
So I would encourage you to look for that, look around you and see where do I see that. Um, the next thing that we talked about or another thing that we talked about in the PowerPoint and we want to touch on um, just verbally with you would be those composition structures. Um, so uh, going along that analogy of cooking, right? We have our ingredients, the elements of art, line, value, color, texture, etc. We have our recipes, those principles of design, balance, unity, movement, etc. So we also have uh, methods of preparation, right? So how you prepare those ingredients for the recipe it makes a big difference. And those um, compositional structures, they're like um, different ways of cutting, right? You can slice, you can chop, you can cube, you can julienne, you can shred on and on, right? Well, probably not on and on, but you get it. There are a lot of options for how to do that, right? It's all cutting, but it um, gives a different effect. And so these structures, you could also think of them as templates, basic templates to plug into the drawing for arranging your elements and creating those principles of design. So it could be a nice starting point or foundation if you're feeling stuck. Um, they're also basic and um, examples for a reason because they work and they're good foundations. So that's why we have our basics. Um, and we had a couple of those. The rule of thirds um, and that one we touched on when we were talking about emphasis. Um, triangle, L shape, S shape, O shape or circular or radial and diagonal. Those are all wonderful basic um, templates for plugging in your elements of art and then um, creating that principle or principles of design. Um, so I have, right, our theme uh, or analogy that we keep going back to is that of cooking. And so for our homework assignment, I wanted you guys to choose things from the kitchen. And it could be food, fruit, veg, canned goods. I don't know that you'd want to leave meat or cheese out, but that's up to you. Bread, um, measuring cups and spoons and silverware and knives and cups and right? Everything. Colanders, right? Things that start with C. No. Um, but things from the kitchen. So that's where I got that idea. Plus there's just a plethora of uh, objects to choose from and could uh, provide very interesting result. Uh, but we could take those things, right? Um, and then as we think about drawing them with line, that's our ingredient, um, we would like to think about Am I creating movement in this piece? Am I balanced? Do I want it to be a symmetrical balance or an asymmetrical balance? Um, would I like there to be a point, a, you know, a focal point or some emphasis in the work? So then I think about how those are going to be arranged on the page and those compositional structures will come in handy for thinking about how to obtain balance, how to obtain movement, right? Those would be really great. Diagonals, oh, movement all day, every day when you use a, a diagonal framework for putting your drawing together, laying out your subject matter. So the next thing we talked about is negative space. And when you talk about negative space, it is not negative as in life is hard and I am um, sad and everything's heavy right now. Negative space is just the opposite of your positive form. So your subject matter, right? For me, my onion and bell pepper and bowl, that, those are my positive forms. And then everything that is around and between, that is negative space. And <clears throat> When we think about our composition, it's that arrangement, intentional arrangement of your positive forms and that negative space within the edges of your format that really uh, create your composition. So we would like to begin um, focusing on that negative space and, and as well as the positive forms. It is critical to maintaining proportion and it's going to be there whether you uh, look for it or not. When you draw a positive form and you plug it into this uh, format, 
then you automatically create negative space. You can't have one without the other. It's there whether you want it to be there or not, or you want to think about it or not. So you may as well give it thought so that um, the same way that we were looking at measuring things when we were citing last week, you can measure that space between subjects. You can look at the shape of that space as a basic shape. You can take angles using your um, drawing tools, right? These are, uh, that space is measurable and it has a great importance. So we want to key into that. Uh, and then the last thing that we were talking about would be the viewfinder. And I don't know how many of you have used a camera, like an actual camera that has a viewfinder. Um, so many of us these days, um, and probably most of you young people, um, only use cell phones, like your mobile phone as your camera. And they're really good cameras, so great. I'm not condemning that or judging it, but just thinking of um, growing up, having a camera that I had to look through the viewfinder and move my camera and my body around to get the shot that I wanted, right? To capture the information in the scene in front of me that I wanted to keep. So that's what we want to think about is this viewfinder is a window that you're looking through to frame your composition. So um, the, there was an illustration of holding your, your hands up, right? Just making little L's or corners, however you want to think about it. And then fitting them together. And then you have your rectangle. It's a viewfinder. I can move that around and I can frame different things so that, oh, that's in my rectangle now and that's in my rectangle. Hey, maybe I don't want a rectangle. Maybe I would like a square. So, right, just whoop, slide that in. Or maybe I want to look at it vertically. So that can function as a viewfinder. You could also make one. Uh, gosh, I didn't even think to have one out and around. Uh, but you could take a piece of cardboard or even your heavyweight paper. Um, cut a piece out, not very big, like an index card, a three, three inch by five inch rectangle uh, or a four by six. Right. That's fine, too. Um, and then or use an index card even better. Uh, fold it in half, cut out a uh, square or rectangle unfold it and there you have it, right? That's a great viewfinder. And it's not necessary, um, but like we were talking about with those compositional structures, those basic templates um, for laying out your information, the viewfinder is a great way to get started many times. Like, where do I want to start? What do I want to look at when I'm observing my still life? Or if I'm drawing a landscape outside, or I want to do a portrait of my cat thumbs or guinea pig Willie. I don't know. Or maybe you have an iguana named Sprinkles. Um, I know one of those. Anyhow, um, that idea of the viewfinder can be a great tool um, for the beginning stages. How do we see what we want to see? Okay, so let's talk about our homework as we do the demonstration, like the drawing, the actual drawing part instead of just the talking part. Um, what I asked is that you choose three items from the kitchen. Any three items, it, it, up to you, right? Lots of possibilities. <clears throat> And then what we're going to do is create a still life. So we're no stranger to that, putting inanimate objects together um, to create a reference to draw from. It's a really classical way of working and how observational drawing is done many times. Um, for a long time, Dutch classical artists, that's 15th, 16th century kind of stuff. And it's great. It works. It's a good learning tool. <clears throat> so you're going to arrange them into a still life. And then that's done. Don't touch that again. Don't, don't, uh, you know, like, oh, I did a thumbnail and then start moving things around. No, 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 no. You just set it up and then leave it there. That's finished. The next part, right, is to um, have your sheet of newsprint and then um, your technical pens. Um, something that I didn't know um, is that you guys got three pens that are the same size. And I'm not bummed about that uh, necessarily. They're great pens and this 
you know, one millimeter is a good doable size and will be useful with many applications. I love the idea of having different diameters of pen tip because you get a finer mark um, or a thicker mark. So your line quality starts out inherently different with having those separate diameters. But having this would be just fine. So uh, if you, and what I mean by that is if you picked up your supplies from the college, um, then you would have received, pardon my, um, I'll opened up like a kid at Christmas time. Um, you would have received this package and it will have three identical pens in it. Um, so we're gonna use those today. Um, since we've got them, we're gonna use them and we're gonna be making 10 different uh, compositions here. 10 different thumbnail sketches or drawings, however you like to say it, are going to happen here. And um, we're going to be changing our perspective on the uh, subject matter, as well as changing the position of the subject matter within the format, um, and looking at that in terms of touching the edges of the format, foreground, middle ground, background. Uh, we're also going to think about the scale of the subject within the format, how big or small is it, and how much of the information is visible to um, the observer. So let's get going on that. Um, on your, uh, in the PowerPoint, what you would have seen on the very last slide on our top five takeaways. I don't know if any of you are space lizards or time suckers, but that's a reference to them, uh, to Mr. Dan Cummins. Um, he's not for the faint of heart, very irreverent, um, but love him. And uh, we have our top five takeaways is what I meant to say. And at the, uh, to the side of that information, you would have seen, as well as in the homework, um, an example of 21 um, thumbnails that explore compositional opportunities. Um, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some frames. Um, so what, <clears throat> what I might like to do is my paper, right? So these little frames, here, I'll draw one right here. These frames, um, what they are for is, it's similar to a viewfinder. I'm gonna pretend like this is my large format and then everything in here, um, that would be my plan for a bigger drawing, right? That's how I would know if I'm quote unquote being successful, if I like the work, if it's interesting enough. Um, so I may like to have this vertical orientation of the page. I may also like to have a horizontal orientation on the page, right? So these are good things to look at. Which direction do I want that format to be? <clears throat> so um, we all know how to do our thumbnails, our gesture drawings, and that's what this is. Um, we're wanting to explore different compositions. So it's, you know, your choice um, within each of these, and we want to make different choices. So go ahead. And we're gonna use our pen, not just because we have it, um, but it's great to start feeling a different uh, medium. It, it has a different um, hand and page feel, uh, and it gives a, a much different look um, to the, the artwork. Here's uh, one, right? Great, that looks wonderful uh, to me. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, toot toot, but this is what, what I mean to say by that is that this is what I'm looking for, okay? So that's great. Now I've, I've done this, I don't need to do all of the, uh, the same thing again. I want to do something different. I wanna look at different possibilities for composition. So maybe I've already got the frame over here for a vertical orientation. And um, I do like my vantage point where I'm seated. So I'm gonna, I'll stay put for right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the, the scale. 
going to draw a little bit larger Oh, my bell pepper is sweating. <laughs> See, this is why I said that I don't think meat or cheese is a good idea <laughs> um, for your soul life. Although traditionally, you did see a lot of that, so maybe it's not so bad. I don't know. Okay. All right, there's another one. And what you may uh, have observed is that I started out inside of my uh, frame and then quickly started drawing outside of it. And the reason for that is what I have talked to all of you about before is that it is better for us to draw through, um, draw transparently, draw the entire subject. Uh, it gives us a more accuracy organically. And if I stop myself short, then I already know I've set up the scale and that's what I want to see, but I have a better chance of getting an accurate shape if I continue off and I have a better chance of getting a really solid ellipse if I keep going instead of starting and stopping. So that's why I've extended out there. Um, I also understand that this is my frame and I could come through and make it more bold if uh, visually if I did not uh, if that was a clear. Okay, so let's do a few more. Um, so I, this one is probably how we normally think about including things within uh, our picture plane uh, or our format. Uh, here, coming in, zooming in, getting close, okay. So what's the opposite of that? What if I back out, huh? What if I get further away and diminish the scale? So what if I plug these guys in back here? pleased with that one there. Uh, something that I would like for you to begin thinking about is the inclusion of the surface. So I've got my subject matter, right? It's resting on something and that surface is a great, uh, it's there. So that's number one, it's there. So maybe we should include that. Um, secondly, it gives more of an environment to the subject um, and explains what's happening in the scene. So it's a definition of space. Uh, it's also really good compositionally. Um, so I'm going to do all of those things. And what I'm noticing right now is uh, the change in my negative space. So my positive forms, that would include the surface kind of, right? So this thing too. What an interesting long negative space broken up here. I mean, this is negative space through between these guys too. And then I cut that way down, but I still have this really great pocket of space going on. I like my diagonals here, some nice movement and elongation as I stretch across with just that move. And then I love that this pairs with this, so I have some great movement going on in that piece, right? Principles of design. Here, there's a, a really nice um, heaviness to the work and what I perceive to be a good balance, right? I've got this open space and then I have this filled space. There's also a pretty great balance, asymmetrical as it would be, because I have content over here and no content, um, but that feels pretty well balanced as well. 
So what are some other things? So I'm, I've remained stationary. I could um, change my perspective to the subject and stand up and have um, what you would think of as an overhead, bird's eye, aerial perspective. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself another frame. Okay, yeah, um, interesting because I'm starting to see, you can see I'm drawing outside of the format again, again, um, but I can see the roundness of the opening for the bowl changing, right? How, <clears throat> excuse me, disc-like and flat it is here, ellipses, ellipses, it comes a lot more round when I stand up and I look, um, get that angle on it. I wonder... Um, another idea could be, uh, in terms of these frames are great, I love um, putting the frame down and drawing within it. Another thing that you're able to do, and maybe try this, um, is to go ahead and, and make yourself a thumbnail, right? Good using landmarks. I, I'm, <laughs> keeping in mind um, what we did, uh, what we've already done, right? The tools that we have. So looking at my bell pepper and thinking my monster bell pepper and looking at where the bowl enters and exits um, and, and where I'm seeing that gives me a good starting point as I think about like, where am I going to put this information? And then looking at the, the spacing on the side, that's also going to be key in getting me to that appropriate circle. And even though I'm using pen, I'm cool with multiple lines right now because that's the nature of this work. Is I'm looking at composition, um, I'm doing gesture drawings. They don't need to be perfect. Um, and I can always come back in, right? And I can make those more firm, the ones that I want to keep, if I'm having any difficulty and visual clarity on what's going on but I've been working with my uh, <laughs> the look of my thumbnails for <clears throat> a long time so it, I got enough clarity for myself so it's a basic round shape looking at how these are these the bowl and the onion are lining up with one another and then getting a little bit of a point on it the center, there we go, a little flat there, and how about there? Okay, so now that I have this in, right, that's my subject matter, I can place a frame around this content if I wanted to go about it that way. So I've already explored here, right, I have a frame that starts right here and cuts over, up, and across. So I've already checked that out. Maybe what I'd like to do is, so far, I've been working with um, this idea of a diagonal, and <laughs> I've been working heavy with that L shape in the bottom left corner, right? Everything's holding here. And I think for me, the shape of it and how it holds that way and the movement of it, I like that. Um, but it could be a good thing for me to check out what if I, 
What if instead here? Make it central and see what that did putting the frame around it. Um, I automatically get a, um, a sense of what that drawing is going to look like just by coming in and putting the frame. Before that, it's a nice thumbnail and I get the sense of my subject matter, but it doesn't have a placement within a, a format. So putting that border, um, I get an idea of what that finished piece is going to look like. So <clears throat> I can also, sorry, I'm going to block your view for a, a little bit. Um, because remember, I'm not touching my still life, I'm moving myself, uh, and that may require me to move my drawing too. You bear with me, guys. Um, so I'll go back to placing the frame and I'm going to. Oh man, I put it in the bottom left corner again. Well, you know what? We are who we are. All right. Okay. So, right, I've got this guy here, and uh, that's from moving around to this side of my, my subject matter, <clears throat> and my still life. Um, gosh, I do really like that corner. Also seem to prefer a horizontal orientation. So I'm gonna give myself a vertical frame and come in. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I think I'll I'll anchor in that bottom right corner with that onion and bowl. So then I have uh, another setup here with this uh, next uh, vantage point. Let me put that back up top. And then I would love to even, so everything is also staying very low in the picture plane. So last time we were together, um, we were talking about that foreground, middle ground, and background in terms of ground placement. Um, and I have a lot that's in the foreground and the middle ground. I don't have anything yet that explores the background, so maybe that would be a good thing for me to look at. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I already have seven different compositions. I need three more. I am on fire. So let's check that out. I'm going to go put a, another horizontal frame because I love it so much, and I'm going to throw my information. I'm just going to throw it. Um, Oh, that would be kind of fun. Just include the bottoms of the subject matter. So just barely get a little bit of pepper going up here. Just a teeniest bit of it. And then get the bowl touching the top and side of the format. And then the onion. Just touching the bowl. There we go. And I see just this and this. Oh, and then that comes across right here. And that has a change in direction. Yeah, throwing that information and pushing it back, pushing it up uh, <clears throat> higher, um, pushes it back in your composition. So that's a pretty neat thing. Uh, and I think I might like to look at that again maybe <clears throat> vertically because that vertical gives me a lot more room, right? Here when I uh, go up in the, the format, I don't have as much room to describe. So I think I'd like to do that with the vertical. And let's place the information, let's put it center. Oh, center, but up high. <laughs> okay, so here, 
Yeah, that's good. And pepper. And onion. So we're still doing the thing that we were before, which is familiarizing ourselves with the subject matter and um, getting our um, getting used to our information. But now we're going a step further where we want to start thinking about how that uh, information is presented on the surface. So I'm going to throw this over here, the front and the back of my um, surface go the same direction. Ooh, and I can see both sides of it because I put it back so far, and this is curving around. Oh my gosh, you're gonna you're gonna start to see all my mess in my studio if I keep drawing down further. This is gonna come under here, that there. Okay. Oh, that's kind of neat. I didn't notice how much further you feel from the subject matter when the scale is small and it's. Um, small because I pushed it, I wanted to keep all of it contained on the format and I pushed it up towards the top so now I'm giving you all the visual cues to push it back in space. Yes, very cool. Two, four, six, eight, nine, uno mas, one more. Um, so let's get, oh well, what should we do? Um, when in doubt, for Lauren, horizontal orientation for my frame or my uh, viewfinder and for this thumbnail oh I think it would be nice to have like a slice out of the middle so let's let's have some pepper here let's have some bowl yeah so I don't see the the bottom of it I like that and I don't want to see the top of the pepper, and I just want to see a little bit of that onion. Oh, yeah. Oh, it would be way cool if I could... Oh, no, I like that. But I was just thinking about touching every edge of the format. That would create some really cool pockets of negative space, a lot of interest. Um, but I already have that. Look at all this negative space over here, and then I've got a piece over here, and i got one in here. Oh, it's just full of it. Um, so, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, and ten. Obviously not in, <laughs> labeled in the order they were done, uh, but that you don't have to put numerical values with your drawings. I just need to be able to, actually, why don't you? Why don't you put your numbers so that as you're going along and you're numbering them and then you only get to nine and you say, oh no, I need a 10. Or you've uh, gone too far and you've done 21 of them and you think, ooh, um, are they all different? That's the, the key there is I wanted you to do 10 because I feel like it will stretch you with the ideas of different composition, um, but not stretch you too much where you feel like it's impossible at this point. There are so many ways of organizing this information. Um, and that doesn't even, so for our exercise, we are not moving our still life, but um, in another, <clears throat> in another uh, dimension time um, exercise, that could change and that could open up another um, bunch of opportunities for uh, composition. So technical pen, um, three items from the kitchen arranged into a still life. Do not touch the still life after it's set up. That's set. Then you're going to come over to your newsprint and you're going to make yourself 10 compositional explorations, thumbnail size. So they all fit on that one sheet. And we are thinking about <clears throat> placement of the objects within that frame. We're thinking about scale. Um, we're also considering our principles of design as we go along. You may make some um, notice. You may have some notice of that happening. And um, we would like to try for horizontal as well as vertical orientations um, on your, your frame. 
um, that representation of your format, that teeny representation. Also would like to encourage you to change your perspective on the subject. Get up, look down on the subject matter, move around to the other side of it. Um, uh, you could even come down, you know, low, below the objects and, and look up at them in ants view. That would be pretty groovy as well. Um, and then think about your scale and where it is uh, in here, okay? That's what your task is for this week. Um, that and the quiz. Um, so I hope that the information... Um, hits home. If you have questions, remember to use the discuss discussion forum that's on our Canvas page, and you're also welcome to email me anytime. Um, and happy drawing!